Sweet up, doo doo. Oh gosh. We love up up. He made this joke off camera and then decided to do it on camera. <laughs> We are competing from A to Z in Disney's Hollywood Studios. We're competing from Z to A in Hollywood no, Studios. No, I'm competing A to Z. You're competing Z to A. No, nah, I'm competing. We're competing, and I'm gonna win. Z to A, baby. <laughs> Nothing like a good scat, right? <laughs> Two frets. Oh. One alphabet. <laughs> Go. Wait, there's only one alphabet? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with with the alphabet. <laughs> Where, you know, it starts with... Am I stalling long enough? Oh my gosh, I hate this guy. <laughs> oh wait, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. All right, alphabet challenge. This is my first time playing this game and Zay just played twice, so I think I have a disadvantage. He was very sweet and let me take the alphabet in order for my first game. So he's doing it backwards, I'm doing it forwards. We are playing the alphabet challenge here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. There are a couple different rules. Whoever can get the, all the letters, that all the letters have to correlate with something Disney related. Whoever can get all the letters first is the winner. Now thanks to one of our amazing viewers and friends, Big Brother Buddha, who came up with the idea that one of us has to start from A and work forward, and one of us has to start from Z and work backward. Last time I started from A and worked forward, in our Epcot alphabet challenge. So this time I will be starting at Z and moving backwards. Now we can't, it can't just be willy nilly. We can't just choose random things and go. Walt Disney presents W, uh, mark it off the list. I uh, know it actually has to be uh, in different categories. Another amazing uh, viewer, uh, Elijah Griffin, came up with the concept that we have different categories. Uh, we only have a certain number of letters that can go into each category. Once the category is out, we, we, we can't use it. And our five categories are rides, live entertainment, food and beverage, merch, and uh, a wild card, which a wild card is anything that aren't in those four categories. Uh, like taking a picture, sharing a fun fact, things like that. I am headed to Toy Story Land right now because I'm gonna start with a ride and I'm gonna try to crank out all of my rides early. Maybe with a couple pit stops, but I wanna just knock out the rides if I can. So I'm headed to Alien Swirling Saucers for A. Because I am starting with a Z, we're headed to the back of the park, actually to the back of Toy Story Mania, because there is a gift shop as you exit Toy Story Mania. And I know I can find this item here, but it is actually a Zerg um, toy. So we're using our first merchandise item uh, with the letter Z, Zerg. It looks like a bit of a longish line here, uh, but it looks like both sides of the Alien Swirling Saucers are open, which is good because that means the line will move. Hopefully quickly, 40 minutes. Oh, a, a bold way to start the game. We are allowed to use Genie if we like. Of course that complicates it because of return times. But uh, let's see what the Genie return times look like for Alien Swirling Saucers. Wait time went up to 45 minutes, but Genie was only five minutes out. So Sage and I agreed to get Genie today. It was $32 for Hollywood Studios, woof. Spring break right now, but it's weirdly slow for spring break. So I'm gonna finish my coffee and then ride Alien Swirling Saucers. We have made it to the back of Toy Story Mania. And there's this fun little gift shop here that is all Toy Story based items. There he is, uh, Evil Emperor Zerg. Do these lights make anybody else think of Pokeballs? Cause that's what they make me think of. All right, we are making our way back towards the middle of the park. We are going through Galaxy's Edge. I told you, a lot of zigzagging today. Because live entertainment is on our uh, category list today, we have to hit at least five live entertainment things. And we have to be very careful about hitting those sooner rather than later because live entertainment is the first to stop for the day. Uh, they typically stop around five o'clock. We started this challenge around 11 o'clock, which means we only have really between five to six hours to make sure we hit all the live entertainment. Okay, but we are actually headed to uh, meet Mickey because for why, uh, I've chosen Yen Sid. Yen Sid is actually the sorcerer character from uh, Fantasia, where you see Sorcerer Mickey first get his uh, sorcerer hat, where he steals the sorcerer hat. Uh, so we're gonna go meet Sorcerer Mickey, and that will count as our Y, Yen Sid, which is actually Disney backwards. Aliens rolling saucers, done. That's A. One of 26 down. Um, I love that ride. I think it's a blast. Again, not worth the really long waits, but 
still fine. Like I said, we are sticking to uh, rides early. So our next one is gonna be Toy Story Mania, which does not start with B, but it does feature a uh, beloved Toy Story character, Bo Peep. So Bo Peep is gonna be our B today. We're gonna catch her on this ride. And it's a little bit of a long wait, 30, oh, it just dropped. It was 40 when I walked over here. It's only 35 now. Um, the genie windows are out a little too far, so I'm gonna stick with the standby for this ride. No, unfortunately, I think this is probably gonna be one of our longer waits of the day, just because we have to go to Red Carpet Dreams, and that's where you can meet both Minnie and Mickey. Uh, it's a very sought after uh, meet and greet experience because you can meet uh, basically Mickey in his Sorcerer Mickey outfit, which uh, there's nowhere else on property you can currently do that. Mickey and Minnie starring in Red Carpet Dreams. Oh, currently 35 minute wait. Really hoping it's not that long, fingers crossed. All right, I'm currently in the doors. Uh, it has been, it's 11.34, which means it's, it's about, it's been about 20 minutes from the front of the line to uh, being inside the doors. I still have a little bit more to wait before I even meet Minnie Mouse. And then after that, then I meet Mickey Mouse. 25 minutes. And I'm in the ride vehicle, and it's, why do I look like this? 25 minutes. <laughs> I got best of vehicle. I don't think there's anybody else in this vehicle. But I got best of vehicle. Oh, no, 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 it counts for the people next to me, too. I got best of vehicle. It's very hard to get best of vehicle when you're playing with Emma. All right, got Buzz slash Bo Peep on Toy Story Mania. That's two rides down, two letters down. So I'm gonna go for a third ride, third letter, and I know it's still going, I'm so sorry, that's the only and Sage is probably blowing me out of the water right now, but I think it's gonna bite him later. So I'm headed to do um, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, and I just need to think of a C that goes with it, and that's easy, Chewbacca. Hello, hi, how are you? Hi, nice to see you, how are you? Good. Oh, you, you love you love Mike and Sully, absolutely. So I gotta tell you, I'm playing a game with some friends in the park today, playing the alphabet challenge, and whoever uh, completes the alphabet first wins. And obviously, I had to see you because M for, of course, Minnie. You can't you can't go wrong with Minnie. Oh yeah, I feel so awful. I just lied to Minnie Mouse. I lied to Minnie Mouse because I didn't want her to feel bad that I was only here to see Mickey because of Yen Sid. But like, she's just you know we, we gotta hype we gotta we have to hype everybody up. Gotta hype everybody up, and I didn't. I didn't want her to feel bad. So, Minnie, I love you. I'm sorry I lied. Just like I'm here for Mickey right now. I'll, I'll be back for you another day. Hello, hi. How are you? <clears throat> it's good to see you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm very tall. Uh, but I gotta tell you. Oh yes, my. I've got, oh, the monsters. Yes. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm playing a game with some friends around the park today. Uh, we're doing the alphabet challenge. First person to complete the alphabet wins. But I had to come in and see you because of the letter Y, which is Yen Sid. And there's, you're right, the, the sorcerer. So it's, I just had, yes, I know, I know. I'm just, I mean, do, you, do, you, do you mind if we take a picture? Awesome, all right, here we go. Okay, that was perfect. Uh, shout out to the amazing PhotoPass photographer uh, that was in the room with uh, Mickey because he was like, well, why for Yen Sid? You gotta take a picture with Yen Sid's book and it has a big Yen Sid written on it. So, uh, a shout out to that photo pass photographer so, for proof that I got why. That was all in all a 35 minute experience, not a 35 minute wait. Uh, I got out and had exactly 35 minutes, which again, not ideal starting off, but hopefully these next couple ones we're just gonna hit bop, bop, bop right off the bat. For our next two, we're gonna be in Galaxy's Edge. So back to Galaxy's Edge we go. Oh my gosh, okay, Chewbacca's right up here. So I might swap and grab a character here instead of getting on Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. If I can real quick just grab a selfie with my guy Chewie. <laughs> Looks like he's on the move though. Let's see if I can get ahead of him. Five. You didn't see it, but I got it. I had turned the camera off like a silly goose. But I saw Chewbacca, I got the high five. It was kind of actually more like a hand tug, which was interesting. 
Uh, but he's headed, headed back in to see the general, but Chewbacca seen, interacted with, and I'm gonna swap my C then to be Chewbacca. I'm still, however, gonna do my D right here because one thing I know for sure is that, uh, I think there's a droid. <laughs> I don't, I think R2 is with you on, when you fly, on the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Hopefully I don't bite myself on this, but I think there's a droid. There's what I'm gonna do for D, but I'm just gonna slip through and head through the single rider line. We have made it back to Galaxy's Edge for our next letter, which is X, and we're gonna jump into our first wild card category. And the wild card is anything that you can't eat, ride, uh, live entertainment, all that jazz. So we're actually going to take a picture for our first wild card and we're going to take a picture with an X-Wing. An X-Wing is one of the ships um, that uh, the Resistance use or, or the Rebel use, uh, uses. It's, it's typically on the, the, good, the good team, the good side, however you view Star Wars. But this right here is an X-Wing. Now, right now, the wings aren't in, the, in its exposition, but when it takes off, the, uh, the wings basically separate, and it looks like a big X, which is why they call it an X-wing. Here we go, let's take a quick picture. We're gonna head a little further back into Galaxy's Edge. I'm really hoping my timing is right, but for W, uh, I think it's time to meet one of my favorite Wookiees. Uh, now, uh, there are two different places you can meet Chewbacca, uh, our favorite Wookiee, over at Star Wars Launch Bay. There's an actual line where you can do it, where you can do a, an actual meet and greet, where you can show up and take pictures with him, or you can do more of a Chewbacca sighting, where he is typically hiding from stormtroopers. They're not here to take pictures and sign autographs because it's supposed to be an immersive land. So again, it's more of a sighting, but Wookiee, still live entertainment, still counts. Let's go. All right, there he is. Ignite the spark, Chewie. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you. How, how are you? I know, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. You stay safe, buddy. <laughs> oh, always makes my heart. <laughs> Why is he? Chewie, my man. <laughs> Give me a big ol' hug. That, if th that definitely counts. You cannot tell me that does not count. I said ignite the spark, which is the calling. He said light the fire in return. He gave me a big hug. Said me, hey man, uh, friends to the end, buddy. Oh man, why does it make me so emotional every time? I gotta stop doing this. Now it's time for another attraction, which according to Disney, this does count as an attraction, uh, which counts in our ride category, our letter V. Let's go. Yes, yes, keep shooting. By this one, you owe me for damaging the Falcon. Damaging the Falcon. Damage us to the Falcon. R5, damage report. R5, droid, thank goodness. Engine failure, all right. Hyperdrive leak, mm, that is not too good. Confirmed, R5. You actually see R5 in the pre show for William Falcon Slippers, man? Um, but you skipped the pre-show with single riders, so I wouldn't have seen R5, but he is featured vocally on the ride, which is enough. Uh, you can, I guess it's not vocal, he's a droid. But you can audibly hear R5 beep bopping, talking to Hondo Onaka on the ride. R5 is a droid. Droid. And if we don't like droid, then we can also go damages to the Falcon. Because, boy, my, that's scary. Have I ever walked by this before? What the heck? I guess I've never come down this exit hallway. That's crazy. You'd think going to Disney World almost every day for three years, you would start to, you'd see everything. No, not true. All right, that's D. Let's see. I've got a plan for E, and uh, we gotta cross the whole park to do it. But again, knock out those rides. That's uh, four letters now, three rides, one character, which is live entertainment. If I'm moridized over there right now, that would be a great V, but I am very far from V. There's our V, vacation fun. Now, vacation fun, we actually can't film inside. It's one of the few attractions we can't film. We can film other movies for some reason, but they say absolutely no filming inside of vacation fun. Totally cool. But it is uh, a 
basically a montage of the shorts that you, the Mickey and Minnie shorts that you can find on Disney Plus. Uh, it's a montage, but it, but through the montage, it creates a brand new short called Vacation Fun. Mickey is getting ready for his vacation uh, to Disney World. He's actually coming to Disney World with Minnie and Pluto, and he's remembering all the times that he went on vacation, all through all of his passport debacles and uh, all the good things, and definitely the bad. Potato Land. Uh, so it's about a 10 minute uh, short. Then we're gonna hop on to the letter U. Potato Land, Potato Land, Potato. It's cute photo ops here as well. Okay, we gotta go. All right, Tower of Terror is our next stop. For E, for Elevator. Tower of Terror is a really fun drop ride attraction. You actually fall faster than a free fall. They pull you down so you fall a little faster. It is so fun, very scary. Um, definitely on the spooky side, but I did time this perfectly. I booked a lightning lane earlier for 12.25 because I knew I was gonna do elevator and it is 12.25. So timing's great. Should be able to hop on and off Tower of Terror and have four of our six attractions done. We are racing a different clock. I'm trying to make it to a specific Indiana Jones show time. So we'll see if we can make it happen less than an hour from now in Indiana Jones's eye. So we've got a lot of letters until then. Okay, we've actually made it into Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We're here for the letter U. I know that seems a little, you know, off, but I promise you it's gonna count. And I will show you when we're on the ride, what we're using our letter U for. Hopefully you caught it. iWorks and U-Works uh, sewage company or, or plumbing company, something like that. Uh, now, that is actually a nod to Ub iWorks, who worked with Walt Disney from the very, very beginning. Uh, early early um, stages of Walt Disney Animation, as well as uh, he helped Walt kind of, you know, create Mickey Mouse himself. So, uh, again, huge nod to Ub iWorks uh, with uh, iWorks and U-Works. So, Ub, that's, what are you, Mickey Minnie, that's the ride. Okay, we're moving on to T? I think T is next. That was not a typical elevator experience. It felt like a bunch. Who, who could have seen that coming? All right, well, I'm on to F, and I'm quite close to where I'm thinking for this because I want to knock a snack out, and I think we can just stop by Fairfax Fair has so many apps in it to get a little lunch and my goal is to get F, G, and H in time to get to Indiana Jones. So I think we can do. It's in 20 minutes. This is where the uh, crisscrossing comes into play. Now, I, it's not going to be as bad as Epcot was because Epcot is huge because of the World Showcase and we were, I think at the end of the day, I think, I forgot what we, I think we got something wild like almost 20,000 steps. Uh, uh, it was bonkers. So we are actually headed to the Tower of Terror for letter T. Not because we're gonna ride the ride, but because I'm gonna show you my favorite piece of merch that I will get at some point. Seems a little silly. I, I can't bring myself to buy it yet just because it's such a niche purchase that you know I don't know when or if I'll ever use it. I'm sure I'd use it every once in a while, but anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Uh, I'm gonna show you my favorite piece of merch. Here we go. Fairfax Fair does have mobile order. You might not think it because it is just kind of a walk-up stand, but it does. You never know what has mobile order. Check the app to see if the spot you're looking at has mobile order. Um, or, you know, if you watch enough of our videos, you'll probably start to know. But Fairfax Fair uh, has a pretty surprising menu of mashed potato bowls. Uh, they rock. Unfortunately, they did 
uh, replace my beloved BLTA hot dog. They moved that menu item to Dockside Diner and it is not as good at Dockside Diner as it was at Fairfax Fair, but that's fine. Um, I got my mobile order. As I was walking up, I hit, I'm here, prepare my order. And I just have to wait for my mashed potato bowl to be ready. And then it's on to G, uh, which I gotta think of. I'm thinking something, I'm thinking we wildcard G to get something out of the way fast so we can get to Indiana Jones. All right, from Fairfax Fair, I got the buffalo chicken bowl with chicken breast nuggets tossed in buffalo sauce and topped with coleslaw served on mashed potatoes in a waffle bowl. It's $14.49 and we're taking it on the go. I'm taking a bite first though so that we know the F counts. Mm. Chicken, potatoes, buffalo sauce, can't go wrong. I'm taking this to go as we had to find a wild card G. This is the Tower Hotel gifts and I'm gonna show you my favorite piece of merch. Hopefully it's still here. This is the Tower of Terror robe. I am secretly obsessed with this. It is so soft. Yeah. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was. It was it's about 75 bucks, but the Tower of Terror robe. Every time I wear a robe, it reminds me of a cape, and if it were socially acceptable to wear a cape in public and just walk around and swish around, I would. Okay, so Tower of Terror merch, Tower of Terror robe. It's going down for tea. And now we're, oh gosh, going all the way back to S. Okay, we're a little zigzag here. Uh, I'm, a, I'm already exhausted. We have made it to gas station. Gas station right here. This is Oscar's electric vehicles. It is a gas station. There are gas pumps. You can see gas prices that I wish were real on them. Uh, but what Oscar's actually is, is your stroller rental stop. You can rent strollers, double strollers, wheelchairs, and ECVs. Here is that daily pricing. But yeah, Oscar's gas station, an important spot uh, for any of those mobility need rentals. And that's our first wild card of the day, but I'm headed to H. I just have to get through H and then we're at I and we can catch that Indiana Jones show at 115, which I can't look because my hands are full, but we probably have about 15 minutes. Okay, I was gonna go all the way back to Hydraulics, which is a which is a brand new stand that just uh, popped up. It features uh, savory churros. I think I'm gonna get a quick snack from Sunset Ranch Market. Sunset Ranch Market is basically uh, kind of a catch-all for a, a bunch of different quick service locations like uh, Fairfax Fair, Rosie's All-American Cafe, the Pins and Souvenirs uh, section, Anaheim Produce. This all, is, this all is under basically Sunset Ranch. So I'm gonna go to the Anaheim Produce section of Sunset Ranch Market. And uh, this is where you can grab, uh, you know, assorted chips, a couple different fruits. I did get a frozen Coke. However, uh, here at Anaheim Produce, as well as the place we were gonna go, Hydraulic, you can actually get uh, spiked frozen Cokes. So you can actually grab a frozen Coke with either Bacardi, rum, or a Jack, uh, Jack Daniels, which is whiskey. So I went for a Jack and frozen Coke. This is actually my first time trying one of their uh, spiked frozen beverages. Uh, it is all pre-mixed. It comes out of one machine. So thank you, letter S, uh, Sunset Ranch Market. Oh, wow. Wow. You can definitely taste the Jack Daniels in that. It is definitely a spiked frozen Coke. Since we're this way, and I did, that's why I, that's why I switched my letters a little bit. That's why I decided to do Sunset Ranch Market because for letter R, we're, we're already back here in this general area. We're gonna do Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. People are already headed into Major Jones Sun Spectacular. I am heading to my. What am I on H? We get to do one of my favorite things in Hollywood Studios. I've made it to Baseline Tap House. This is our stop. Since Indiana Jones is an outdoor theater, you can bring food and drink in, which is really awesome. Baseline Tap House is an amazing bar with a lot of really awesome craft beers. Uh, craft beers are kind of difficult to find around Disney World. Baseline is gonna be like the best stop for them. Courtesy of Baseline Tap House, we have the Golden Road Hefeweizen, which is a Los Angeles made beer, 5% alcohol. Um, I like this one, I've gotten it before. Uh, I'm in an IPA phase and they have a, ha a hazy IPA but on the physical menu, it didn't say hazy so I didn't wanna risk it. Also, it's pretty hot and a have a bison's a little more refreshing. Uh, just took a sip, sure is more refreshing. Um, super light while still having a lot of that like kind of weedy, hearty flavor. The other H item, as I know that you were wondering, is a hard cider. I can't get hard cider, so I can't drink ciders. Can't digest them. 
as, as somebody called me in the comments once, I'm a tummy trubber. So, how nice and it is. I like to sit off to the side in the very, very front. Of course, if I could get here early, I would like to sit in the middle in the very, very front, but I'm often running from somewhere else to catch this show. But I like sitting in the very, very front because the stunts all look really cool from up there. So I'm headed down to this front row here and we're gonna watch Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular with my Hefeweizen for H&I. What a cute show. And I'm actually using the letter Q as kind of a broad statement, really because uh, it's important to, to take care of your bodies during these challenges. So we are gonna grab some lunch, uh, and it just so happens to be one o'clock, and I think it's time for Q quick service. I think I'm gonna grab some quick service on the way to our next letter, which is P. I'm actually gonna go to Dockside Diner. Dockside Diner is here in Echo Lake, and this is typically where you can find your hot dogs and your kettle chips. Uh, I did order something that I've never had before. Yeah, welcome to Dockside Diner. Let's uh, eat some lunch, let's eat some quick service. I'm trying something new today, which is a pretzel hot dog, an all beef quarter pound hot dog topped with apple braised sauerkraut and onions, drizzled with mustard aioli on a pretzel bun and served with house made chips. That's not a bad hot dog, y'all. No, I do wish there was more onion and sauerkraut. There's a little bit underneath the hot dog. The, uh, the pretzel bun is kind of on the drier, a little, a little harder side, which is typical for a pretzel. Um, but it's clear that like, this is the, the, the later batch of pretzel buns. Uh, but overall, if you like hot dogs, it's a really solid choice. Is it the best hot dog? If I were to rate it out of one out of 10, I'd give it like a six. I'm not a huge hot dog person, so I was trying, I was trying to do something a little bit different, a little you know, off the beaten path for me. So I definitely don't hate it, but it's definitely not something I would come back for again and again. Eight out of 10 for the kettle chips though. Mm. We are headed for our next live entertainment letter, the letter P, and I think it's time to meet a Pixar character. Now there are a couple different places you can meet a Pixar character, but I think we can actually head to Pixar Place. It's not a crazy busy day today. It is technically spring break, but it is one of the less popular spring break weeks. Now you can check the times for characters on your My Disney Experience app, which I have not done, and I'm sure I'm going to regret it. Let's see, Mr. and Mrs. Incredible seem to be the only characters currently out. Frozone is not out, Sully is not out, which is a big bummer because I wanted to take a picture with him because of the shirt that I'm wearing. Okay, I think I'm gonna do Edna. Hello, darling. <sighs> darling, it's good to see you. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm good, I'm good. I, I have a question. So because I, I'm a big fan of capes, but I know you don't love capes. So I tried to do kind of like a half, like a, like just like a wrap around. Yet yeah, still, still on the fence? That's like a butt cape. Oh, okay, sure, a butt cape. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah or nay on, on, on tish capes. Nay, that's a nay. Go, well, still I, a cape. Still a cape, right, you're right. Still a cape in the boots. No capes. Okay, my next letter is O, and I have an option here. It's four minutes until Frozen sing along where I can sing like Olaf. I can like, you know, watch Olaf. Or I can meet Olaf at Celebrity Spotlight. Oh, this is 10 minutes. 10 minutes to meet Olaf, which is way, way less time. Here at Celebrity Spotlight, you can actually meet Olaf. It's right next to the Frozen sing-along show, so it's actually a fun pairing if you get a chance to see Frozen sing-along and then come right next door and then meet Olaf. He has his whole summer background behind him, and uh, it's a fun meet and greet because there aren't many places you can actually meet Olaf here uh, at the parks. Hi, good to see you, how are you? Good, good, good. So I'm playing a game with my friends. We're doing the alphabet challenge and we have to complete the alphabet and obviously O for Olaf. I had to meet you, so thank you for helping me win. High five. Yes. Lightning round, boys against girls. Okay. All right, that was a bit of a time suck. 
Um, I sat down just a little after one, and it's 1.45 now. The show itself is about 20 minutes, but, you know, loading the show, unloading the show takes some time. Um, totally fine, though, because it gave me the opportunity to think about <laughs> some of my next letters. And I was able to snag a lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. When I first looked, they were all the way out past four. And you can only get the first available, so there were no not available before that. And obviously that won't work, because I'm using it for J, which I will explain. But uh, I tried to modify it. You modify, refresh, you can sometimes get better times. You learn all about that in our Genie 101 video that's on the channel now. But I was able to modify it to 1.30. Perfect. I might have botched the timing on this. Um, I had a plan. I, I know I'm jumping a couple letters. I had a plan for L. I was thinking about it while I was in line, and I was like, this is... I was like, this is the plan. L, I want to meet Lieutenant Agnon. I want to just have a small interaction with him. Lieutenant Agnon is the lieutenant on Galaxy's Edge, uh, who is searching for resistance. Sympathizers, uh, it's... Um, it's a really, uh, it, it's a really fun interaction. It again, brings the brings Galaxy's Edge to life. Just having not only, you know, you know the, the resistance walking around like Chewbacca and Vi and Ray, but also to have a little bit of that conflict that the stormtroopers and Lieutenant Agnon are there. Lieutenant Agnon typically shows up uh, on the 30s of every of every hour, um, and it's currently 1:35. And I still have a few more letters to do, and I don't think I can wait a full hour for Lieutenant Agnon, so I might have to flip some things around. We just met Olaf with me. The next one is N, I believe. N. So we're gonna go find some merch. I think that's our best bet here. Arrived at McKimini's Runaway Railway. Excuse me, you there? Who, me? Do you mind helping these good people into the cartoon while they fix this here locomotive? Then, of course, antics ensue as you ride in Goofy's train through the Toon World. Um, pretty fun. And the way we're doing Jay is Jingle, because there's original Jingle made for this uh, ride. Gorge, what's this lever do? <laughs> okay, I've got kind of a Hail Mary I'm making here. We're gonna head back to Galaxy's Edge. I would love to do another live entertainment right now. I'm on K. There's one character you can meet in this park whose name starts with K and that's Kylo Ren. And Kylo Ren is a roaming character. And he does not have set times that you know he's gonna be out and roaming. Definitely this is a little bit of a cop out, but I cannot think of anything for N. You at home are probably screaming at whatever you're watching this on and going, do this. It's a lot harder when you're actually here. Um, but I think I'm gonna try and find something N Nala oh my gosh Nala there we go get some cute Simba and Nala ears okay I am rushing as quickly as I possibly can because I really want to make it to Galaxy's Edge for Lieutenant Agnon for my letter L but I still have M in fact we're gonna come to the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge now the uh, Brown Derby Lounge is open from 11 to 8. Uh, you can uh, just come up to the bar and order a drink, or you can uh, grab a seat. They actually have a Hollywood Manhattan. Yeah, y'all already knew. Now we finally move on to L. It is uh, 144. I think I don't. I think their sets there aren't, they aren't any longer than. There's no way they're longer than 20 minutes. Uh, come on. All right, I've made it back into Galaxy's Edge. Hopefully it will pan out for us and give us a quick Kylo Ren interaction. I see stormtroopers. Stormtroopers. I think it's just troopers. Not seeing any Kylo. No Kylo Ren. He's pretty tall, so we'd see him. So I'm gonna loop around and head to Katsaka's kettle instead. Katsaka's Kettle is in the marketplace in Galaxy's Edge, and it's a great spot to grab buttered popcorn, which is butter blue grains, or you can get Outpost Popcorn Mix, uh, which is a colorful blend of sweet and savory flavors. Now, I uh, can't have theme park or movie popcorn, I think because it's popped in coconut oil. 
I don't know, but I can't have it. It makes me sick. So I'm gonna get the cold brew black calf, which is a coffee drink that you can get here. This coffee drink is really fun because it's got a cream cheese foam and cocoa puffs on top, which is pretty awesome. So that's what I'm gonna grab here. And then we're gonna head to try to catch our L, which I'm gonna try to do an attraction for. I figure out what I could do there. Okay. All right. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Walking quickly with a Manhattan. I am now cruising through Galaxy's Edge. Here's the thing about this cold brew. I have to. I have to get off topic. They have this in Disneyland as well. It's much better in Disneyland for some reason. It's sweeter in Disneyland. The foam, I think, is sweet. The, I think it actually might be the coffee that they use is a better brew or sweeter, whatever it is. It is sweeter than this. Um, and I don't like my coffee super sweet, but this is very, very bitter. Emma does have to add packets of sugar to it. So Disneyland's is better. But we are headed now to an attraction for Elle. Now I know what my word is gonna be, and there are actually two attractions I can go to that will help this word work. So I'm gonna go to the first one, see what the wait time is. And then if it's too long, I'll go to the second one. But the word is luggage. Come on, here we go, you guys. We are so close. Typically, you'll find Lieutenant Agnon and the stormtroopers. Oh, I see a crowd. Oh, okay, I see a crowd. Yes, yes. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so their sets are a little longer than 20 minutes after they uh, do. I guess they uh, they they have a first show uh, near the Tai Echelon, which is the big first order ship, and then they have some time where they mingle and they have a second show. But I get to see them interrogate uh, some families, which is really funny. This specific Lieutenant Agnon is not as uh, like snarky and sarcastic. He was, he was intense. Okay, while we're here, we're gonna head into Doc Ondar's. Because inside of Doc Ondar's, that is where you can find kyber crystals. Kyber starts with a K. So there are different kyber crystals. There is purple. Uh, green, yellow, blue, and of course, red. And hidden throughout some of these red, uh, which you won't know it unless you purchase it, is a black kyber crystal. Each one means something different, but kyber crystals are basically the energy and the aura of whatever Jedi you would like to be. So looking at my list as I make my way out of Galaxy's Edge, I have officially filled up my live entertainment category, which means moving forward, I cannot use live entertainment for the rest of my letters. Um, I did a little bit of pre-planning just now. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how well this is gonna go because I just realized I still have, I think like three or four attractions left, which is bad planning on my part, but we're gonna do our best. We're headed back to Pixar Place. Ugh. Wow, lots of steps today. I'm gonna have to chug my cold brew, but I made it to Star Tours. The adventures continue. This is a motion simulator attraction themed to Star Wars where you fly with C-3PO at the helm accidentally and uh, end up in rotating scenes uh, from Star Wars. There are some scenes that are better than others, some scene combos that are really amazing. I love this ride because it's different pretty much every time you ride it, and I think that's really special. It also tends to have a pretty short wait. It's only 10 minutes right now, which is pretty much a walk-on. This would have been a good one for droid, too. But luggage. We'll take luggage. There's our two. All right, we're coming into where the luggage is relevant. So, baggage claim and transport. Program to ensure that nothing escapes this part of the queue is their luggage baggage claim. Uh, and 10 minutes turns out to be a walk on. We are, we literally walked right up here. Now we are headed to M. And since I didn't get a character, a live entertainment option for K with Kylo Ren, I'm gonna go for M as a live entertainment option. Mickey and Minnie were 30 minute waits. Max doesn't come out for another 20 minutes. So I'm going to a continuous meet and greet, Edna Mode. J is actually for Jack-Jack. There are multiple Jack-Jacks everywhere. So the Jack-Jack up there, Jack-Jacks, Jack-Jacks all the way up there. 
There's some more Jack Jacks in the back because Jack Jack can clone himself. That's one of his superpowers that we learn he gets later on in the franchise. And uh, just a fun little scavenger hunt, a fun nod to the Incredibles movies here in Pixar Place. We gotta go get more merch. Okay, let's see if we can find, find an eye with merch. I changed my mind. There's a meet and greet I really love um, that also works for M. It is here in Walt Disney Presents right now. And you can do a meet and greet with uh, the live action Little Mermaid, Ariel. Oh, excuse me. You can do a meet and greet with the live action Little Mermaid, Ariel. And this is a super sweet meet and greet because Ariel is just so sweet and wonderful. And there's typically not any line for her. So absolutely a great one to do if you got a princess loving kiddo. And yep, just like I thought, no line for her. So we've got Mermaid. All right, super quick Mermaid meet and greet, done. Next up going for N. Uh, I wanna knock out my live entertainment here. I think this is my last one. Okay, I do have to do another. I know, we'll do Nancy, see how we feel. Hi, Nancy. How are you? <laughs> oh, good. I'm very good. I'm playing a game, actually. I'm trying to race my friend to do something for every letter of the alphabet, and you're my N for Nancy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I'm going to win, probably just because I came to see you. <laughs> Nancy met. Now, here's the thing. I am a grown woman. I have never seen any of the Disney Junior shows represented in the Disney Junior section. I do not have kids, so never seen them. I love those meet and greets. They're some of my favorite meet and greets to do. The characters have so much character energy. It's just like so nice to go see them. And I feel like almost every time I meet the characters for a game or whatever we might be doing, they have just the most magical moments. Um, they're all memorable moments. I just love seeing them. I love meeting the Disney Junior characters. Um, I'm gonna pop over here and get my O with a wild card and I've got a really fun one. All right, we're actually looking for Inside Out merchandise. The Zerg doll was here. Oh, I did not have to walk all the way back there, okay. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on now. Okay, up, I see that. Find me with this Wally. There's Zootopia at the bottom there. Inside Out. Inside Out, you guys, where are you? Monsters, Inc. Okay, there's cars. Okay, there's Coco. Toy Story. Okay, there we go. I mean, if I, if I feel like Inside Out got a little robbed here because we're only looking at socks, but Inside Out socks. I was looking at the wrong category. Merch was not lacking. I, I'm apparently merch is also completely filled up. I can't use any more merch. I think that's lacking is wild card items. Kind of have to adjust here, but once again, headed back to Galaxy's Edge. All right, so out in front of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you'll notice it is a facade of the Chinese theater, the famous Chinese theater that's in Hollywood, home to many very famous premieres. And something very fun is they do have actual handprints from the actual stars, Mickey Mouse, of course, but also like Annette Panicello, <laughs> Roger Rabbit, Steve Martin. So lots of stars have come and done their handprints here. Um, which is really awesome. In fact, Audrey Hepburn's handprints are only here. They are not in Hollywood, which is very cool. But there uh, is one pair of handprints that I'm going with for O, and it's Sylvester Stallone's right here. Let's see how much bigger his hands are than mine. Don't look that much bigger. They're not. I have the same hands as Sylvester Stallone, and I could probably fight just as good as him too. Do, does he fight? I guess he fights in movies. Anyway, Sylvester Stallone, the reason I've chosen his is because his uh, handprints say Oscar on here and that is because Sylvester Stallone did his handprints here in Hollywood Studios when he was working on a movie called Oscar as the character Oscar. That's right, Hollywood Studios used to be a working studio back when it was MGM Studios and many of these stars actually came and worked on movies here. Sylvester Stallone came and worked on Oscar which is gonna be our O. So I love that. I think it's super cool and I'm debating whether I want to save my character meet and greet for Vampirina for V, or if I want to go do it now to make sure that I get to it with Pluto. I think I'm gonna save it for Vampirina because I love meeting Vampirina. 
I hope that's not a mistake, but that means we've got to get pee. I am gonna do a snack for pee, and I could do pretzel, I could do popcorn. Allergic to the popcorn, so can't do the popcorn. Um, I don't want the pretzel, so I'm going a little bit out of the way for something a little bit more interesting. Not super out of the way though, don't you worry. Ice Cold Hydraulics is a new Coca-Cola spot with some treats, some meats, some classics like uh, popcorn and pretzels here. Um, but we're actually gonna scoot around and see if they have the flavor of gelato I need to get. And hopefully they do, because this gelato is really tasty and I just have to have a flavor that starts with P. All right, the gelato stand, which is relatively new, it's only been around, I think like a few months, not quite a year yet. Uh, this is the Pog gelato. Now, originally when the gelato stand opened, the Pog was a seasonal or monthly flavor, but they have changed it to be a permanent menu item because it was so, so popular. Now, if you don't know, Pog is passion orange guava. It's a very popular juice blend in Hawaii and also here in Disney World. You can find it a lot in Disney's Animal Kingdom as well as at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. It is so delicious. It's super sweet, but I love it. Uh, fun fact, actually, this game was born from uh, Sage and I doing a challenge in Epcot where we had to find something that started with the first letter of our name in every World Showcase Pavilion. And he had a lot easier time than I did, I'll tell you. But I do know something that we're going to go get for Q. We have made it back into One Man's Dream, Walt Disney Presents. This is a Walt Disney exhibit. Um, I highly recommend this. This is, my, in my opinion, a must-do when you're in Hollywood Studios. One, they blast the heck out of the air conditioning in here. And two, it's just a really amazing exhibit. There we go. Queen model sheet. So... Here in this little animation section, you can see concept art and model sheets from old Disney films, which is so cool. And my favorite one on this wall has always been the Alice in Wonderland character model sheets because you can see them from all their different angles when the animators were putting their references together, which I think is so fun. And there is one for the Mad Queen, the Red Queen, Queen of Hearts. I could not remember her name. Uh, so there you go, Queen model sheet for Q. I love this exhibit. Back in Galaxy's Edge, we're about to hit up Smuggler's Run, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Currently it's a 60 minute wait, but we are headed in the single rider line. Now, we're here for the letter H, because uh, thanks to Hondo Onaka, the letter H, we're able to take part in this adventure and steal some coaxium from the First Order. Because I'm a single rider, I would like to be an engineer. I am indeed an engineer. You're I have no idea how Quincy is doing. Uh, she could be just like literally ab about to finish. I mean, I, I, don't, I have not even checked in with her yet. We need more snacks. I think we should do G for green milk. I'm looking at the alphabet and my categories, and I haven't done any merch yet, which I've saved for some of the harder letters. I have a good idea for X. That's gonna be a wild card. You know I wanna try to get to Vampirina for V. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do just a couple merch right now. All right, I'm in Celebrity 5 and 10, uh, mostly because I need to get another phone charger. And they have a fuel rod, which is the swappable phone charger station here. But we're gonna find our merch for R in here. Oh my gosh, I know what I wanna do. <laughs> okay, this is a munchling. Munchlings are um, Disney characters in food form. I used to think they were kind of silly, but I've fallen in love with them because I now think they're silly but fun. Um, this is Ramen Noodle Pluto for R. I think I'm going to go ahead and knock out a merch for S2 and then head on to our uh, tea with a snack probably, um, or a location I should say. So for our S, I'm heading to, no, let's go in the store. Keystone Cloth Edge is a store that has a lot of Marvel and Star Wars merchandise. So I'm sure you can find Spider-Man or anything Star Wars for S. Let's see if they've got any Marvel in here. Oh, look, they've moved it around. It's more General Disney merch in the front now. Oh, that's cute. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I know. Stormtrooper. Here we go. These are clone troopers. 
Is this a stormtrooper? It's Captain Cardinal. Um, do we have just like a general stormtrooper vibe? Anywhere? Clone trooper. Imperial stormtrooper. Okay, we're good. We found one. I do not know how to tell the stormtrooper types apart, but we got one. Stormtrooper for us. I'm, I'm feeling good about my plan of uh, just knocking out a ton of the longer stuff first and being able to blaze through at the end here. I'm feeling good about it. I've made it to the milk stand here in Galaxy's Edge. Now there are two different ki uh, kinds of milk here that you can get here. And again, it's not really milk. It's more of like a rice milk with like different flavors. It's a little bit of a different texture. Uh, you can get the blue milk or the green milk. So I did get the green milk. Uh, it's more of a citrusy orange flavor. I, I asked the cast member just out of curiosity because I know what, what I think it tastes like. And they definitely said it's more of a citrus um, ice milk. A lot more of an, uh, a rice icy milk, if you will. Sorry, I saw a very good friend of mine. His name is Kembe. Kembe is actually uh, at Savi's, who helps people put the lightsabers together. Kembe saw me from a distance and was like, he was like, Sage? <clears throat> In case you were curious as to what that face was. Now, uh, let's do something a little embarrassing, shall we? We're headed around to 50's Primetime Cafe. This is a 50 themed restaurant with some antics where you've got to follow the manners. Your server is your cousin, you're in mom's kitchen eating. It's a, it's a fun one. Not great if you have social anxiety. Um, you can see Sage and I eat there when ten, um, two 10 year olds planned our perfect day in Disney World. We are headed though to Tune In Lounge. It's the Connected Lounge. has some amazing bartenders. It is a full bar and Tune In starts with tea. There are a few specialty drinks on the menu at Tune In Lounge. I went safe and got one that started with a tea with the Tune In peanut butter cocktail, PB&J cocktail. It is peanut butter whiskey, blackberry brandy, Irish cream liqueur, um, and uh, maraschino cherry. It is really, really delicious if you love peanut butter and whiskey. If none of the future cocktails sound good to you though, the bartenders here are absolutely fantastic. They can certainly make something to your taste. Ah, this is strong. It was a bold choice. Okay, where do I want to go? Right, well, that puts us one letter from Vampirina. So I think me and my peanut butter cocktail are going to go find uh, some merch. Probably with Ursula on it, because it is you. All right, here we go. So I love these little play sets. They're really aged for kiddos um, over three years old. But they have lots of Disney characters, so kiddos can play with their favorites. And they usually have a Little Mermaid one, because Little Mermaid's so popular. Two different aerial figures, Land Ariel and Sea Ariel. And who's out in the back? None other than Ursula. And Flotsam and Jetsam too. So with Ursula in that playset, we're gonna call that our U merch. Okay, we're actually gonna head into Muppet Courtyard. And further into Muppet Courtyard, we're gonna head into Pizza Rizzo for one of my favorite pastimes. For, uh, you know, letter F on my wild card. We're gonna freestyle dance in the wedding room because that's something you can do. There's a full dance floor ready and waiting for you to freestyle dance. There's no one in the wedding room. Amazing. This is the wedding room. Oh, let's get, oh, let's, let's get down, shall we? So I guess I should explain. There's a wedding room up on the second floor of Pizza Rizzo's. It's literally just uh, fun theming, but uh, there's a fun uh, theme that says there's a, there's, there's a wedding reception happening and uh, it's a Muppet recep wedding reception. You, it's just a place you can eat with fun theming and you know, tables and chairs, but from time to time, there will be no one in there, just like there was. And you know, go nuts, freestyle. All right, Vampirina is meeting, but not too long of a line. Now, one thing you might see with the Disney Junior characters is they do sometimes uh, disappear, like they'll be meeting and then they'll head in for a quick break and come back out. It's usually like five minutes. I would not recommend getting out of line if this happens to you. Just hang out, they'll be right back. Unless it's the end of the day in which cast members will let you know. All right, Vampirina did just go in to tune her guitar. Hopefully this isn't the thing that makes us lose. Um, I don't know where Sage is, but I think he is close to being done. And we've got four more letters, including Vampirina, but I've got it planned out. I'm gonna do Vampirina, water bottle refill station for W, an X, I have a good plan, but I'm gonna do a little bit of ping ponging for it, and then just two merch for YZ, and I have plans for my YZ merch. But it's gonna be close. We are getting down to it. 
E, we're gonna go Easter eggs. And I don't mean like the Easter eggs like the bunny leaves behind. I'm talking about fun nods to other movies or uh, times of the past, Easter eggs. You'll find Easter eggs all over Disney World property as well as in Disney movies. Disney's a big fan of Easter eggs and nodding to different people and nodding to different movies and experiences within other movies. So we're gonna show you a couple different Easter eggs while we're over in, here in Echo Lake to make sure that we've covered all of our bases. Before Hollywood Studios, it was called MGM Studios. One of the places that you can still see the MGM Studios logo is right here. It says the world you have entered was created by the Walt Disney Company and is dedicated to Hollywood, not a place on the map, but a state of mind that exists wherever people dream and wonder and imagine. 1989, Michael D. Eisner. It is still kind of hard to see, but Mortimer and Co. Uh, was going to be the name of Mickey Mouse before he was Mickey. It was used to be Mortimer until uh, Walt Disney's wife said, "Hold on, hear me out. What about Mickey?" And Walt Disney was like, "That's it." huge moment that we learned recently in a, uh, a Hollywood Studios scavenger hunt, but these crates used to have a lot of um, Easter eggs on them, but they uh, were all painted over, which is a huge bummer. But I'm gonna come over here above Hollywood and Vine, which is a table service restaurant. It's, uh, it's more of a, it's, it's a buffet. So when Hollywood Studios, or sorry, excuse me, MGM Studios uh, first came to be, Roger Rabbit was actually going to be the park's mascot. That's why you'll still find nods to Roger Rabbit everywhere. But here's a fun Easter egg. Above Hollywood and Vine is the Eddie Valiant office. Uh, Eddie Valiant is a private investigator uh, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He's the, you know, he's the main guy in the movie. But right next to that, you can see uh, the frame of Roger Rabbit literally jumping out of the window when he was upset when he thought Jessica Rabbit was cheating on him. Uh, it's a nod to the movie as well as a nod to Roger Rabbit, the mascot that was for a hot minute, but then things fell through. Hi, Vampirina. Now listen, I'm in a race, so can we take a super quick picture so that we can I can beat my friend? You're my V. I'm going for all the letters of the alphabet. Yeah. I saw in with Nancy. You're my B, so I'm very close to the end. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vampirina. Wish me luck. I will. I'll get the win. I got it. Vampirina rocks. I love that girl. She's so cool. Um, I need water bottle refill station. So I was going to refill my water bottle, but I have not drank enough water today. Do as I say, not as I do. And by that I mean drink more water. Um, so we are booking it to the closest water bottle refill station, which is not that close, but I am fast. And then we just have to get Xenomorph and then hope that we can find Y and Z in the merchandise easily. So we'll see what we can do. There is one back here apparently, somewhere. Cut through the DVC membership hut. Water bottle refill right here. And water fountain. There are also water fountains around the park. So you've got your hydration options, but there is a water bottle refill here. Okay. And we're gonna head over here to Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular for our final wild card. Over here is our uh, do not pull the rope. Do not pull the rope for D. But we're gonna pull the rope because YOLO. Uh oh, oh no, oh blimey! Oh, oh no. <laughs> that was, I did not anticipate, I did not mean to make this poor man fall. I apologize. That's why it says do not pull the rope. That's. Listen, guys, that's on me. I, re I greatly apologize. Okay. Ooh, all right, we got three left. Three left. I have no idea where Quincy is, but she said, literally she could text me at any time and be like, it's over. Star Tours, here we go. One of our last couple rides here. Star Tours, 10 minutes. Star Tours is a motion simulator attraction where you hop into a star, a speeder, and you're supposed to be given a tour of the galaxy, different planets, uh, but unfortunately, C-3PO, which is why this is our letter C, C-3PO ends up in the captain's seat and we, you end up on a huge adventure. I am Lando Calrissian with the Resistance. General Calrissian to see a You're probably wondering, Quincy, where is there a xenomorph in the park? And the answer is, there's not anymore. But I cleared by the producers to use this as a wild card. The xenomorph is the name of the alien in Alien. And, as you might know, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway 
used to be the great movie ride, which did have a scary alien scene. So it's a Gourney Weaver animatronic and plenty of xenomorphs. So as my wild card with an homage to great movie ride, xenomorph for X. Let's go see if we can find Y and Z in merch. I do love the vibes of Baseline Tap House. It's a lot of uh, California vibes because they've got storybook lands like um, Fantasyland canal boats, storybook canal boats, uh, Disneyland posters up there. Great vibes in here all around. So I got the strawberry hibiscus soda. Uh, it's on tap. I've never tried it before. Let's, well, here we go. Breed love, this is for you. Oh, okay. Oh, it is incredibly sweet. It is a sweet, sweet, sweet soda. I would say on the sweet level, it's almost like a cream soda, just on a sweet, sweetness level. It doesn't taste like cream soda, but like, it's like that kind of sugary, you know what I mean? It almost tastes like I'm eating a, a strawberry Jolly Rancher. There's a little bit of, a, I can taste a little bit of the hibiscus. It's more just on the back end of the palate, just in order to give it a, like a little bit of um, freshness, I suppose. Uh, but really, it, it tastes like a strawberry soda like a Jolly Rancher strawberry soda. It almost like tingles my teeth, how sugary it is. Okay, I met up with Miranda. Uh, Miranda is one of our reporters and one of our uh, behind the scenes producers. Uh, she happened to be in the park today. She loves the strawberry hibiscus soda. So I gave the rest to her because I have to complete this competition. You can see Miranda actually in our trader competition, uh, our trader challenge uh, up on the channel now. A, all that's left is A, and I'm gonna head into Muppet Vision for our very last attraction. I feel like this is an original idea. It's a fun Easter egg, but also uh, in the attraction, so it still counts as you know, choosing that as uh, that attraction. You're gonna love it, here we go. And it's kind of tricky to find the merchandise in Toy Story Land. Uh, you'll see it really easily if you ride Toy Story Mania. It's on the way out the exit. If you don't wanna ride Toy Story Mania and wanna check out the Toy Story merchandise shop, you just head up the exit of Toy Story Mania and into the building. And you'll see the merchandise shop right there, which is where we're headed. So if we find Y and Z. Okay, hello. Well, no, youth shirt. Youth basic graphic tees. That's why we just need Zerg. And I do get to show you why Muppet Vision 3D is on our list for our final letter, the letter A. This is uh, a net full of jello. I know that's kind of weird, but uh, a net full of jello is actually a nod to one of the original Mouseketeers, Annette Funicello. She's one of the favorites, actually, which is why there's, there are homages to her all over uh, the parks. You see purple. Zerg, 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 Evil and Bull Zerg, our trying to be a Buzz Lightyear in the box from the movie. That's Zerg, baby. Oh my gosh. Overall, baby. Stage just finished, too. Okay, we found each other. Dramatic into the game. Yeah, we physically had to check the footage. Yeah, so whenever we are so close that we don't know based on text who did something first, we literally check timestamps. The exact same minute that the doors opened at Muppet Vision was the minute that I was showing you Zerg merchandise. So, so um, rematch? I rematch. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, these alphabet challenges are no joke. No, I'm sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I guess... Tell us in the comments who you think had the better day. Okay. Tell us who had a better day because obviously what these alphabet challenges are are a super unique way of doing a Disney day. Absolutely. Tell us who had a better day. That's how we'll decide the winner. And also we'll rematch. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch Emma and Sage compete in an alphabet challenge in Epcot. We'll see you there. Also hot there. <laughs>